So we finally got some official announcements from AMD regarding RDNA 3, as well as a whole bunch of information on their processors. And some people I've seen seeing this slide with a, wait, 50% jump from RDNA 2 to RDNA 3, weren't we seeing leaks of like two times the performance or more? Does that mean that's impossible? Is it only 1.5x times the performance? Well, not necessarily. Let me dive in here. First of all, please notice that this is performance per watt, okay? Also, I should say, where is this all coming from? This is not leaks and rumors. This is official slides from AMD. They did a report to their financial analysts, well, their financial analyst report, so people could decide whether their stock should go up or down. Anyway, the point is a 50% performance per watt uplift is a, you know, performance per watt uplift. So let's do a little bit of a calculation here and see, so is it still possible that AMD could release a flagship with maybe two times the performance of a 6900 XT? Well, if we first of all remind ourselves what is the power draw, because remember, this is performance per watt. The power draw of a 6900 XT uh, is rated, according to this uh, tech power up listing, at 300 watt maximum. Again, that's for its reference design. Obviously, we've seen things like the 6950 XT, and then uh, third party cards uh, will draw more power than that. But the reference spec there at 300 watt, I'm going to take that as a baseline. So if you do 300, well, well, let me actually, we got, we got to start somewhere else here. Okay, so if we want to get a two times performance lift from a 1.5 uh, times performance per watt uplift, I'm going to take two and I'm going to divide that by 1.5. And that gets me 1.33333, okay? So what that means is that if they raise power consumption by one third, then they would be able to then combine that with a 50% performance per watt increase to reach a two times performance uplift. That's what I mean. In other words, what I'm saying here is if you get 1.5 times the, uh, the performance per watt, and then you multiply that by 1.3333 in, in, in a watt increase, now you're seeing a two times performance uplift. So this is still not out of the question, if you ask me, because what would, what would that power draw be? Well, if you take a 300 watt baseline and you multiply that by 1.333, basically 400 watts. So if AMD did release a 400 watt or more flagship, then that's still compatible with a two times performance increase coming from a 50% performance per watt uplift. Now, I'm not saying that they will do that. I'm just saying that only seeing a 50% uplift here doesn't immediately kill the possibility of a two times performance. It just means it wouldn't do it at the same power consumption. And it doesn't mean the power consumption needs to go up 50% as well, because the percentages kind of build on each other, right? This, And by the way, this says greater than 50%. Now this is also just projected. So these I would read as performance targets. We could see higher performance per watt. We could also see lower, but this is their projection that they're giving to their financial analysts. Anyway, um, so they're also confirming things that we kind of already knew, like the five nanometer process node. Um, now, advanced chiplet packaging. So there had been the rumors of chiplets for RDNA 3. Um, and then, you know, some people have been kind of backing off on that. Is that true? Is it not? Well, right here from AMD, advanced chiplet packaging. Now, what exactly that means, wh which is it just the high end, just the low end chips that get this? There's a lot to find out about that, but that's certainly going to be interesting. Uh, Rearchitected compute units, optimized graphics pipeline, next gen AMD infinity cache. A lot of this is pretty standard. Now, what I would have loved to see, and I'm sure we'll get eventually, is some ray tracing performance uplift numbers because uh, I, I'm sure that this projected performance per watt is rasterized performance. And I do think that with the next generation of GPUs, ray tracing performance, at least from the NVIDIA side, is probably gonna be at the point where I'm gonna be less inclined to say, well, ignore it on the low and mid range because you're not getting good enough performance to make it worthwhile. I think we will be seeing enough performance to make it worthwhile. Um, at least from the NVIDIA side, so I'm hoping AMD is also going to make some big gains there as well. Now we do get a, a few more slides here, so this is, ah, 
get my head out of the 2024 here. So this is a timeline. So we're seeing how they jump from RDNA 1 to RDNA 2 on the 7 nanometer process, which by the way, I believe was also about a 50% performance per watt uplift. Uh, and then we're seeing how they're jumping to the five nanometer process with RDNA3 right here. And then they're planning to move to an even further advanced node. They're not saying which one, but an advanced node. So better than five nanometer at least. Uh, with RDNA4, Navi4x, and notice the 2024 timeline here. Now, I don't know how much I should read into the fact that this is actually placed before the 2024. Like, the, the, it is the end of the graph here, but could that have been slid over? I don't know how accurate this is, what their, what their timeline is there. I shouldn't read too much into that. But it, it's looking like if we read that as 2024, a two-year release cadence makes, makes sense here. And we're seeing RDNA3 falling in right here. Where I think we would expect it this year. They also talk about cDNA, and my channel is a little more like gaming PC focused, so I'm not going to dwell on this too much. Uh, but for their, you know... AI performance compute uh, GPUs here, uh, seeing some very interesting stuff like a greater than 5x uh, AI performance per watt uplift. Notice that's for AI calculations here and a lot of other improvements. Um, and again, this does, the cDNA stuff, I'm not gonna dive too much into here. Again, not really the focus of my channel, but a good info here that you could dive into more as well. But how about their CPUs? So they've given some updates on the CPUs. So remember, uh, we've just recently got uh, our 3D Vcache Zen 3s, which saw big uh, gaming performance uplifts, but we're expecting at the end of the year, Zen 4. Well, we're now officially seeing Zen 4 Vcache here listed as well, but it looks like timeline-wise that will be coming after the initial launch. Now Zen 4C, I'm pretty sure that's like a compact design for servers and stuff. Uh, not something I'm going to be too worried about for the consumers and gaming hardware uh, that I focus on here. But we're also seeing that uh, by around this 2024 mark, uh, we'll be seeing the Zen 5 and including a Zen 5 Vcache. Now, I'm noticing they're leaving the 3D off of these two Vcaches. I'm not sure if that's an accident or actually means there's going to be some change to that setup there. So interesting little tidbit. But we've got some actual performance numbers to take a look at here. So how about that performance per watt once again? Ah, get myself really out of the way here. Ah, okay, anyway. So it looks like they're telling us it's a 25% performance per watt gain from Zen 3 to Zen 4, but that the overall performance improvement should be 35%. Now this is based on a 16 core 32 thread uh, performance coming from Cinebench NT. So what I would assume this uh, overall performance number is talking about is just when you're maxing out all of the cores and threads available on their top end chip. Now again, how would we see more than the 25% performance gain um, that, that they're showing here? Well, again, if it's the performance per watt, then you would just need a slight watt increase uh, to jump up to a 35% overall performance improvement. And it doesn't mean the power draw needs to go up 10% as well. If the, if the power draw goes up, let's say about 8%, then, then if you do a 25%, you know, performance per watt increase off of a higher baseline, I think we'd see about that 35%. Now notice both of these are listed as greater than figures. So that's to be taken into account. Now what about that kind of, uh, single thread, uh, performance that we'd been seeing from their Computex announcement. Well, uh, this slide is once again diving into that. Uh, they're getting into 8 to 10% instructions per clock increase. Okay, so the IPC is about 8 to 8 to 10% 10 improvement. But remember, we're also seeing more clocks, right? We're seeing the, uh, we saw the demo of it going up to 5.5 gigahertz on at least some cores. There have been rumors stating even 5.8 gigahertz might be possible on single core, but that is not confirmed by AMD and could just be a rumor. Um, and and the, the, this is bringing them to these greater than 15% single thread performance gains, because if you get more instructions per clock and you clock higher, you obviously get more than just the eight to 10%. And they're saying up to 125% memory bandwidth per core. Again, we're moving to DDR5 memory. We're seeing ISA extensions for AI and AVX512, although it'll be interesting to see exactly which, uh, if, if all of the CPUs get the uh, uh, AI extensions. But anyway, 
And the point is, we're still seeing this greater than 15% single thread performance gain. Now, again, I think this is still measured in Cinebench. And one thing that's interesting to me there is I don't think Cinebench is partic particularly cache sensitive in the same way that gaming is. So I do think that it's possible that we'll see a better than this in gaming performance increases because uh, these numbers are based on Cinebench, not gaming workloads. So something interesting to think about there. Uh, now, we do, I think, get uh, a, a, some lineups here talking about moving into uh, you know, four nanometer with uh, Phoenix Point. We're seeing some some APU uh, discussions here, which which I think are really interesting. So remember our Zen three that we've been on here. Well, the APUs were using Vega graphics, and we've seen some of the six thousand series with Zen three plus launching with RDNA two graphics. But now with Zen four, we should be seeing RDNA three graphics, and AIE, I believe, is an AI, uh, an AI engine, artificial intelligence engine, um, and that's four nanometer Phoenix Point. And then after that, on an even more advanced node, we should be seeing Zen five with RDNA three plus. That's interesting to me. What is RDNA three plus? And uh, again, the AI engine. So uh, I think these APUs could, with RDNA3 graphics on Zen 4, a 4 nanometer, could be extremely interesting, especially on the uh, mobile segment here. I believe this is a slide we already took a look at. And then again, with the Epic stuff, uh, less focused for my channel, but they did confirm at least the, you know, the names of some upcoming stuff. A uh, little bit of details on that with... Uh, of course, lots of, uh, you know, guys, a gigabyte of L3 cache per socket. <laughs> a gigabyte of L3 cache. But again, these are server stuff, so data center things, so I'm not going to dwell on that. Now, moving on, how about some reviews of Intel's Alchemist uh, A730M? So we'd seen some performance numbers leak on this. Well, it's now looking like... Um, this is based on the Mechanic, Machinic, Machine, whatever, Discovery Edition Laptop 2022, which went on sale in mid-May. And we have the uh, Golden Pig upgrade, <laughs> giving some side-by-side -side comparisons with an RTX 3060 laptop. Now... Um, there's another review up at IT Home, but that one is, uh, is not based on the official driver. Uh, I believe this Golden Pig upgrade review does have the official driver, so this one would make sense. Now, we do see in Metro Exodus the A730M uh, having a slight performance lead over this RTX 3060. However, uh, when we look at Hitman 2 here, we see the A730M being absolutely crushed by the RTX 3060 laptop. Now, uh, to my knowledge, it wasn't stated exactly which uh, power draw configuration, what was the TDP of this RTX 30, 3060 laptop, and the, the website's in Chinese. So um, anyway, <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly uh, how that might play into things, but... Um, overall, it looks like the uh, review had the 730M losing to the RTX 3060. Now, keep in mind, there will be a higher-end A7 uh, laptop chip coming out that maybe would be able to beat the 3060. Uh, we, we could hope. Anyway, we'll see, I'm sure, more info coming out on that in the near future. Now, we're also seeing some uh, information that, again, from our favorite... I'm just going to call him Coco. All right, so hey, Coco over here thinks that, um, well, responding to the comment, I'm more worried about heat dissipation. Is it okay for the fan to cool? And by the way, we're talking about uh, RTX uh, 4000 series graphics cards at the top end, AD102 being the, the top end chip there, saying that they designed a triple can, uh, triple can, triple fan cooler for the reference board of AD102. Now, designing a triple fan cooler and releasing one is not necessarily the same thing. I believe we saw rumors of triple fan cooler reference designs uh, with the RTX 3000 launch, and we never saw those. Those reference coolers were, were a, a two fan. Uh, not saying we couldn't see it this time, but just uh, reporting on that uh, quickly. Now, again, reminder that we are uh, expecting these to come out uh, toward the end of the year, like uh, October for the RTX 4090, which we're expecting to get first. At first, Coco, <laughs> Copite, <laughs> whatever, Capite. 
uh, had rumored earlier launches, but now he is backing off on that and going along with the other people who are saying October. And that lines up a lot more with the two-year release cadence, and this is what more of what I was expecting all along. Now, uh, kind of interesting, at least in China, uh, there's going to be a new uh, AIB partner releasing some cards here. This is Soon Foles. And uh, they entered the market with the 6400, 6500 XT, and 6600, and 65, uh, 560, they mean, they mean 6650 here. That's a typo, videocards.com. Anyway, um, so they're uh, launching some reference designs there, but this is a Chinese thing. I'm not going to dwell on that too much for my audience here. Um, anyway, so if you're looking for a GT1010 to do absolutely no gaming on, hopefully, uh, it's looking like we're getting a new version of that with DDR4 memory from Colorful. So that's going to be not very powerful. Hopefully it's cheap, but I think it only draws... Wait, what was it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it only draws 20 watts, so that's good. Um, <laughs> we've also seen the Zen 4 CPU already delitted. And this is reported over here at Tech Power Up, although they were not the ones doing it. And they didn't want to link the source because they feel like the, the source might get in trouble. <laughs> anyway, this looks like a destructive D-lid here, in my opinion, but it, it, we could be wrong. Uh, may, maybe it's not destructive. And then I'll finish up here with saying, it looks like with the Sony exclusives coming to PC, we're also going to be seeing The Last of Us Part 1, because in a trailer that released, I think possibly released early, I didn't dig into all the details on that, um, uh, but anyway, at the end of that trailer, it's, it, uh, and this is coming officially from, from Sony, it says also in development for PC. Now it says available on PS5 on, on September 2nd, but also in development for PC tells me it's not going to be available on September 2nd for PC, but hey, we could get it eventually and that would be nice. I hope all of you have an excellent day.